Well, good evening everybody, and uh, a change of face tonight, as you've obviously guessed. Rob's away, but uh, he'll be back soon, so until then, you've got me tonight, and the Lord's laid on my heart tonight, Psalm 13, so I thought we'd have a look at that together. Psalm 13, it's very short, it's one of the shortest in the Bible, it contains six verses, but those six verses say an awful lot. It was written by David at a time when he was absolutely exhausted and badly depressed. He was on the run and he was trying to save his life and he was being pursued by either Saul or Absalom. And he was doing all that he could do in his own strength to say a lot. And now he had literally come to the end of his tether. So let's just pray briefly and then we'll read Psalm 13 together. Father, we come to you now and we bow down before you and we plead nothing but the name of our Lord and Saviour, the Lord Jesus Christ in his precious shed blood. Lord, we thank you for these verses that you've laid on our hearts for tonight. We pray that you would move by your spirit and Lord, we pray you would challenge us if you need to, Lord, rebuke us. And Lord, we do pray, please bless us, Lord. And so as we open these words now, Lord, let us hear from you, not from a man. Amen. So let's read from the word of God, Psalm 13. How long, O Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long shall I take counsel in my soul? having sorrow in my heart daily? How long will my enemy be exalted over me? Consider and hear me, O Lord my God. Enlighten my eyes, lest I sleep the sleep of death, lest my enemy say, I have prevailed against him. Lest those who trouble me rejoice when I am moved. But I have trusted in your mercy. My heart shall rejoice in your salvation. I will sing to the Lord because he has dealt bountifully with me. Amen. I've split the psalm up into three parts tonight, three portions of two verses. And verses one to two deal with David's despair. Verses three and four deal with David's desire. And verses five and six show us his deliverance. So then, let's see what the Lord had to say to David way back then. And let's see what he's got to say to us tonight. Four times in the first two verses, we heard David cry out, How long? How long? How long? It's a cry from a man who is desperate, heartbroken, and mentally at his wit's end. Have you ever been there in your own life? He looked up with tear-stained cheeks to heaven, and he was almost crying out, God, where are you? Well, if you haven't been in that place, I would suggest that before you're through with this life, you may well be. There are many situations in life that can bring us to a place of spiritual despair. I know from my own life, illness, and in particular, mental illness, problems with children, bereavement, financial difficulties, and right bang up to the minute, the problems that we're all experiencing with COVID-19. And it's at times like these that we might find ourselves like David saying, Lord, where are you? I need you, but I can't feel you. I can't see you. What, are you working, Lord? Well, if you have, or if you are, this psalm is just for you. David, he felt forgotten. It appears that God had allowed his pain to go on for a long time. The spiritual throne line, as it were, to the throne room of grace seemed to be continually and permanently engaged. You know, time is a funny thing, isn't it? When life's going well, it flies. But when we've got problems, it, it drags, doesn't it? I looked at three examples in the New Testament about people who had to wait a long time and for whom time dragged. 
In Mark chapter 5, there's the woman with the issue of blood. She waited 12 years before she felt Jesus' touch. In Luke 13, we have the woman that says she was bent over. She waited 18 years for her back to be healed when Jesus touched her. And in John 5, we have the man by the pool at Bethesda. How long did he have to wait for Jesus' touch? 38 years. So on that note, let's look at David's problem in verses 1 and 2. David, as emotional terms, he was well below sea level. It seemed to him that his Lord and his God had forgotten him. So if we find ourselves in that place where we feel God's abandoned us, let's always remember that Jesus, our great high priest, has been there before us. Remember that garden called Gethsemane? Remember that cry on the cross? My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? We will never be taken to the depths that the Lord Jesus was taken on that cross, where his father turned his back on him and forsook him. And the Lord Jesus took the whole weight of every sin that had ever been com committed in the world and that ever will be. You know, one lesson I've learned over the years is that God, unlike me, is never in a hurry. God knows what he's doing, and any trial that David was going through was controlled from on high. One commentator said this, David was learning the law of thermodynamics. The greater the heat, the greater the expansion. So then that was David's sorrow. Let's move now to verses three and four. And let's look at his desire, or if you like, his prayer. Let me read verses three and four to you again. Consider me, O Lord my God, enlighten my eyes, lest I sleep the sleep of death, lest my enemies say, I have prevailed against him. Let those who trouble me rejoice when I am moved. David's now moved up a notch. He's gone from being well below sea level and he's just beginning to bob up to the surface. If you like, his head is just beginning to come above the water. David's prayer wasn't long and drawn out. It wasn't very elegant. David got straight to the point. He prayed about personal problems and he prayed about people problems. David stopped going on his feelings. He stopped trust in his emotions. And you know what he did? He nailed them to God's word. He came to the reality of 1 Peter 5, 7, and he truly cast all of his care onto God. He let go for the first time of the problem and gave it to the Lord. Now I know many times I've passed my problems to the Lord, but there's been times when I've kept a little finger on them, haven't fully let go of them, we also, we almost conjure up, well, God's busy, he needs a little bit of hand, I need to do A, B and C. Forget it. Cast your care completely on the Lord and let go and step back and watch the Lord work. In verses five and six, we see David no longer at sea level, no longer with his head just bobbing above the water, Guess where he is now? He's on the mountain top. The Lord has brought him through tears to truth and from truth to triumph. How could he swing from gloom to gladness so soon? Well, the answer for him and indeed for us tonight is that instead of fixing his eyes on the problems, he fixes them firmly on God. Remember that chorus? Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. And the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. He can sing now because he stopped trusting in his own strength. He stopped trusting in his own solutions. And he stopped trusting in his own people. What does he say? But I have trusted in your mercy. 
My heart shall rejoice in your salvation. I will sing to the Lord because he has dealt bountifully with me. Have David's immediate circumstances changed? No. Has Saul called off his hunters and bloodhounds? No. Has David suddenly received a miraculous shipment of arms? No. The reason David could sing was because God hadn't changed, but he had changed David. Do you see that? God hadn't changed, but he changed David. David's God and your and my God is the same yesterday, today and forever. He's the one true constant we've got in this crazy broken world. And David had finally wised up to it. He'd gone from his trial to trust and from that trust he was now enjoying triumph. Yes, have you been there? Our circumstances have suddenly changed, haven't they? The world has changed. How we do church has changed. But praise God, he hasn't changed. I'd like to finish now by just reading the first verse of a very well-known hymn. We probably sing it without even thinking of it, but I thought it was very apt tonight. I'd like to share the words with you and take note of them. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. And this was a line I was thinking of. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we wear. Why? All because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. And on that note, friends, let's go to prayer now. To the God who answered David to the same God who hears you and I and will answer us. God bless.